is no doubt that the speed of light may have changed uh, over cosmological time. And it would be very difficult for us uh, with our present understanding, as I understand it, and I'm strictly an outsider on physics and cosmology, to prove or disprove uh, whether the speed of light has changed uh, over long, long periods of time. That it has been increased, the speed in Princeton, is an outright fabrication. You can go to this person and get him to give you the references and you can chase him down and see if anybody else in this state or anywhere else that has actual knowledge of the scientific work believes that someone has speeded up the speed of light by, what was it, a factor of 300, you said? I'll show you the reference. Uh, let's yeah. see. 300, I think you said. Uh, this will be. That's what the article said. Let's see. All right. Well, anyway. Here, New York Times, uh, May 30th, year 2000. So take it up with Mayor, what's his name from New York? Okay. <clears throat> this is the article just as it appeared on June 4th of the year 2000. Okay, well, uh, I suggest. Dr. Li Zhong Wang. Yeah, find a, find a scientific journal and see if the conclusion is as described in there. Um, you know, I had one thought before I came over here, and this is the end of the question period, so this will be my last thought. I figured this man probably uses a computer. He probably uses light bulbs. He probably watches a television. He probably makes use of the enormous technological innovations that have come from the scrupulous, careful, detailed, and now centuries-long application of scientific reasoning to the universe around us. If you followed his style of approach broadly, not just, we want to teach our children uh, this and that, but took his style of approach towards reality, his uh, uh, assertions about the veracity of, of the work of other people and so on. You wouldn't come up with a calculator. You wouldn't come up with a ruler. You wouldn't come up with nothing like the computer that he's blessed to be able to use. Thank you. Dr. Trevor's had an opportunity for some closing comments. Dr. Hoven, some closing comments, please. Um, I certainly enjoy science. I have nothing against science, but the idea that uh, we wouldn't have computers if it weren't for evolution is simply ludicrous. Evolution has... <laughs> Almost... Don't, don't, use up my, don't use up my time here. Nearly all of the branches of science were started by creationists. It's the evolutionists that came along and, like a leech, began to suck the blood out of a valuable science over the last 20 years. Uh, nearly all branches of science were started by creationists, not by evolutionists. I defy you to find me one scientific advancement because of the theory of evolution. Uh, the evolution theory is useless. It's not only useless, it's dangerous. We teach the kids they're an animal and then wonder, why do they act like an animal? Well, duh. <laughs> They, all these are names of scientists who were believers in creation. So don't tell me that we wouldn't have a computer if it hadn't been for evolution. The guy who invented, like Maxwell, for instance, or uh, uh, Lord uh, Kelvin, and all these guys, all these guys are, were the shoulders that the giants were standing on, or the, the people were standing on the shoulders of giants. These are the giants they were standing on to create a computer. Somebody had to develop the transistor and had to develop the circuitry and printed circuitry. And these guys were creationists. These guys were believers in the Bible. They thought God created the world, and it's, it's man's duty to try to see how God did it and why he did it. Uh, I love science, and it is, it's a useless theory. It doesn't help us get a computer or go to the moon. There's no value to it whatsoever. And I resent the implication that scientists, all scientists believe in evolution, because they don't. The guy who invented the MRI is a creationist like me. There are thousands of scientists who are creationists. Many are indeed afraid of losing their job, because there's a real prejudice against those who don't believe, who don't bow down to the sacred cow. I mean, I'm sorry, here, let me find the right one here. I can give you some examples here very quickly, since these are closing comments here, uh, uh, about uh, some scientists who were wrong in the past. Uh, here, lots, lots of examples of that. Um, 
Dr. Robert Gentry did incredible research on the disposal of radioactive wastes at uh, Oak Ridge Laboratories in Knoxville, Tennessee. He was one of the world's experts on granites. He published in all the major magazines saying, look, the granites have these little tiny halos in them, radio polonium halos, indicating this rock was never hot. It forms too quickly. You can get his book or his website, uh, halos.com, if you want to get more on that. Roger DeHart was a science teacher in high school in Washington. He was told he could not tell his students about errors in the textbooks by passing out current science journals. You can't tell the kids there's a lie in your textbook. Kevin Haley, biology teacher, Central Oregon Community College, lost his job for simply exposing errors in the textbooks because that's a threat to the evolutionist. Baylor University fired William Dembski because he advocated there might be an intelligent designer that caused all this. Forrest Mims was a science writer for many years for many magazines. He was denied a job at Scientific American simply because he was a creationist. Rod Levesque in Minnesota uh, was reassigned just because he expressed doubt in Darwin's theory. Ta uh, teacher Dan Clark in Indiana was told by his superintendent that he could not introduce creationism to his class just simply by showing current science journals. Say, look, folks, it doesn't work. This is the, this is the facts. Um, Dean Kenyon at San Francisco State University was the poster boy for evolutionists for years. He wrote all kinds of books about evolution. And then he made the tragic mistake of getting converted, and they fired him. He sued and got his job back, and now he's teaching again, but only because he was a tenured professor. If a professor stood up 20 years ago in the Soviet Union and said, kids, I don't think, capital, I don't think communism works. Capitalism's a better system. He'd lose his job, or his life. We got the same censorship in America for somebody who dares to question the holy sacred cow of evolution. The students at, at Texas Tech University offered Dr. Denny $900 if he would debate me four weeks ago when I was there. He's the one who refuses to give um, recommendation letters to his students. He wouldn't take $900 to debate me for two hours. And yet he'll stand in front of his class where he's got the obvious academic and psychological advantage, but he won't take on a creationist who can answer his questions. Look, I've, I fly all over the world. I'm willing, I, I do this at my expense. The church has sometimes taken an offering. I want to help. You students need to see both sides of this issue. Now, why so many professors are refu refuse or are, are reluctant to debate this, I don't know. I really appreciate this gentleman coming to do this. I think he's wrong and I'm going to get him converted, but uh, I'm glad he did it. So, I would say, I would say, these are my closing comments, I'm sorry. Uh, God created this world in six days, whether you like it or not, and you're going to stand before him and be judged by him one of these days, whether you like it or not. God created it, he owns it, he makes the rules, and we're going to stand before him. You better get ready for that day. Thank you. Give Dr. Hoven a few extra minutes, and uh, we'd like to do the same for Dr. Trivers. I'm just going to comment, make two comments uh, on what he said and then make a third comment maybe. One is this fantasy he has that there are a huge number of scientists out there who are scared to come out of the closet and admit they're creationists because they're going to lose their jobs. One of the best protected institutions in this country is tenure, which says that after you've taught for six or eight years and you're accepted for tenure at a university, it's extremely hard to be kicked out of the university. There's only one tenure